Hello, everyone. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Wherever you are, whatever time it is. Welcome to the JRPG Report. My name is James Fisher. This is episode 100. And 90, just 10 away from that uh, now surround number of 200. Maybe we'll do something special because I'm out of time. But today, it is a short podcast. Uh, <laughs> last week, we kind of had a longer one. This week, it's going to be short. I will try to stretch it out kind of as much as possible. But it is what it is. I can only report the news that comes out in the week. I can't just, you know, go make up stuff or... I mean, we, we can have some fun, but that is, that is it. So <laughs> uh, stick around till the end, though. I will give some kind of closing thoughts as I rolled credits on Tales of Arise this past week. I, I know it took me like two months to beat it. I'm aware. I play slow. That's fine. Um, <laughs> but we've got uh, got some fun things to talk about towards the end of the podcast, but I will do that at the very end. That way, if, I'm not going to have spoilers in there, but if you just haven't beat it yet or you just want to hold off, I will understand. Um, do have some release dates to pass along for you, at least one in particular, and that's where we're going to start at. As um, you got to start somewhere, and I don't know where else to go. So, a game that I've been looking forward to, maybe you have as well. Definitely a little bit more on the cutesy end of the spectrum, but nonetheless, looks like to be a good turn based JRPG. And that is coming from our friends at NIS America. They are going to release The Cruel King and the Great Hero next year. It's going to fall on March the 1st of 2022 in North America and Europe. Uh, that'll be on uh, PS4 and the Switch. And then a few days later, Europe will get it on March the 4th. There was a trailer, a gameplay trailer that came along with it, and that's over on our YouTube channel, JRPG Report. You can get a better look at that. There... Uh, they just kind of threw the release date in there at the end. Um, in particular, NIS America is pretty good about doing that. They don't, you know, most of the time you get what's actually t called a release date trailer. So you know what's what's coming. Um, they don't really do that. They just kind of <laughs> slip it into the video description or throw up a screen at the very end. Uh, they don't make, uh, I guess, as big a deal about some things than um, than other companies. But, uh, hey, they do what they've got to do. The Cruel King and the Great Hero video is primarily about the gameplay. However, it does set up the story just a little bit. Players will follow you, which is spelled Y-U-U. -U. All she wants to do is be a hero like her father. Her foster father, the uh, Demon King, obviously her, her father, the king, has passed away. Uh, but the Demon King wants to help her with it. However, there's a big catch. The Demon King uh, was once her father's rival. Maybe was uh, responsible for what happened. I, I don't know. I guess we'll have to kind of wait and see how that works out. Uh, from there, they get a look at how gameplay works. There's a look at how items are used. Then how uh, players can equip weapons, armor, and accessories. Uh, there's a good clip of battle in there as well. And finally, you see you interact with people and find treasures in the world. It's a good little short trailer. It kind of gives you an idea about it. And certainly, you know, I guess as a father myself, in particular of a young girl, that this game kind of speaks to me a little bit more than it will some other people. You know, maybe if you're a young and, and single, this, this game may not do much for you. But uh, um, as I mentioned before, this might be uh, kind of a game that I can get into with my daughter and introduce her to the world of JRPGs. She's starting to read pretty well. So um, right about the same age that I started really getting into them. So maybe this is the type of game that can propel that. It looks like a good turn-based little system. Haven't seen additional party members. So um, maybe that's in there. Maybe it is just a single protagonist and that's, that's really all it goes. We'll we'll see if some more medium pops up between now and March. But yeah, I, we weren't sure if this was coming west or not. But in fact, it it is, and uh, we'll be here not too much longer. Shaping up, uh, like I said, March first in North America, and a few days later on March the fourth in Europe. Um, 
there was a live stream that literally just went on this morning. Uh, it wrapped up about an hour ago. I've not seen any information uh, come out. Of course, this was a, a Japanese live stream for Project Trying or for no, it's not Project anymore. Sorry for Triangle Strategy. Um, they had a it was about an hour and a half long live stream. They introduced a few things. Obviously didn't know what they were talking about, but there was quite a bit of gameplay shown for what I can see from the live stream. Uh, like I said, no, none of our <laughs> Japanese and English speaking friends have translated what has happened yet, but um, I'm going to snip out the gameplay and then post it on the YouTube channel, hopefully here in just a little bit, so you can get a chance to look at that as well. We've seen some gameplay before in the past. Um, this one uh, was a mix of live gameplay and uh, commentary with triangle strategy planning and production uh, um, production uh, from Toyomama Asano, uh, the producer of the game, Yasukai Ara, and a virtual YouTuber, Hololive third generation, Noel Shiragane. Um, just... Looking at the live stream, it's kind of weird. Like, I got no problem with the, the virtual YouTubers. I think those are kind of kind of neat and fun. But what was odd is they kind of had a split screen. And on one side was uh, one of the Japanese gentlemen. And <laughs> looking like sitting right beside of him was a virtual animated person. And, you know, when they're by themselves or with another animated <laughs> Uh, YouTuber, virtual YouTuber, Hololive, however you want to say it, it looks fine, but it looked pretty odd sitting right there beside of it. And I'm sure it was weird for for to <laughs> for the individual doing that as well. But yeah, like I said, I will post that on the YouTube channel so you can get a better look at what project. No, I keep, I'm I don't know how I'm going to drop the project part. I really don't. It's it is just it's just a part of it, but. Yeah, I was hoping there'd be some more information pop off about that, but that has not happened yet. Uh, one other release date, I think that's the only other one that we have, yeah, the only one that I have so far, is uh, a game we've mentioned kind of in passing a little bit. Weren't sure if it was coming west or not. Kind of fell silent, but indeed it is coming to the west, and that is Maglum Lord. P-Cube will release the D3 published and Felicia developed action RPG Maglum Lord for PS4 and Switch on February 4th, 2022 in the West. This came out uh, back in March in Japan. So that's kind of what led to like, we don't know. We haven't heard anything about this one in a while. Um, if you have forgotten, let me give you a quick overview of the game. They say, waking up in a new world, you discover you are the last of your species. An endangered demon lord, powerless and alone. Embark on a quest to restore your powers and reclaim your former glory. Forging mythic blades and unbreakable bonds, Magdalene Lord combines action RPG elements such as real-time hack-and-slash combat with dating sim mechanics and storytelling. We're, we're expecting that Dane sim to be thrown in there, were you? No. Um, these, uh, these are the writers that worked on the Summon Night games and some of the illustrators that worked on Fate Grand Order. Here are some of the key features. Transform into our powerful blade. Engaging in intuitive hack and slash style combat. Battle monsters in real time, collecting loot, materials, and precious items. In addition to traditional HP and MP stats, fill the unique DG... Demon Gage, perhaps, uh, to transform into a more powerful form. You'll forge mythic weapons, craft and customize your weapons with a huge variety of stats, visuals, sound effects, and even personality changes. With four types of customizable uh, customizations available, attachment, decal, color, and total change. Explore a vast array of powerful, beautiful, and even comical changes. Battle with everything from a Massively powerful and deadly blade to an ice cream cone or even a giant fish. And here's the dating part. You can find a soulmate to save your species. Of course, you're endangered. You got to do what you got to do. Unlock the dating dojo to track bonds with your party and affinity level with prospective partners. Increase your affinity by battling alongside party members, gift giving, dialogue choices, and more. Hit the right level. You can ask them out on a date or as friends. 
You go to a bowling alley, a cafe, casino, even a bathhouse, or some of the locations you can take your prospective soulmate to win their heart. There you go. <laughs> like I wasn't expect that that one uh, that one either. You uh, do get to choose whether you are a male or female protagonist, each with unique art and voice acting. Um, sounds like an interesting game. Here's my problem with uh, this game in particular. It is one of those ones that has like the full size, you know, full illustration characters in like the cutscenes. But as far as the gameplay goes, it uses kind of a smaller short chibi style. Uh, not exactly chibi, but you know what I'm talking about. Like uh, different than their uh, cutscene uh, animations to the point to where it's kind of throws me off a little bit. I just want to have those models in game. I, I feel like with PS4 and now PS5 Switch, like we should be able to handle that. In our games, I don't like seeing... I don't per, like chibi style anyway. So when I see that, it kind of just throws me off completely. I like the main illustrations for the characters. And I want those in the game. I don't want something that looks like a completely different character. But that's, you know, that's my two cents on games like this. But if you've been kind of holding out like, Hey, that game looks kind of interesting. When's it coming west? It is coming west. Like I said, for PS4 and Switch... On February the 4th of 2022. I did fail to mention at the end of that article. There was a release date trailer for Magdalene Lord. You can check that out on our YouTube channel. Don't forget to leave us a, get a subscription over there. And uh, all the big trailers that pop off during the week. And updates and all that fun stuff. That YouTube will let me post on there. Uh, you can find uh, there uh Subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, you know, all that fun stuff on YouTube. And follow us on our social media channels, Facebook and Twitter, for stories every day that uh, things happen. You can get all the information that we talk about on the podcast. Um, uh, I mentioned that, that YouTube will let us put on there, because one thing they, at least they have not in the past, so I didn't even try to put this on there, uh, that it involves Sword Art Online, Association Lycris is, videos just in general they don't let me put those on there but so the dlc expansion blooming of forget me not now available trailer you can check out uh, via the link on our social media channels you won't be able to see that on there but yes it the first major dlc for the game is out is out is that is that right um is available now, yes, yeah, for PS4, Xbox One, and PC via Steam. You can get it standalone for $24.99. It is also included as part of the game's $44.99 premium pass. So I'm guessing more things are probably coming. If you're planning on getting those, maybe that's the way to go. Here's an overview of this DLC. Sounds pretty substantial. The Blooming of Forget-Me-Not is the first major expansion downloadable content for Sword Art Online, now Station Likers. Additional content includes new story, weapons, outfits, and more. Here's what you get is a whole new story, new maps and dungeons, new divine beasts, new weapons and outfits, PlayStation 4 only for these two things, a dot style original theme, and a set of dot style avatars. Obviously, because that's a PlayStation thing. <laughs> Kirito, Alice, Yu-Gi-Oh!, and Medina fought for peace in the human realm and the reign of the administrator came to an end to avoid losing someone precious to him and to become a sword, stronger swordsman. Kirito sets out with Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, Yu I'm not sure how to say this. I haven't played those, but uh, in search of a new divine object. I know Yu-Gi-Oh! is something different. There was a why, but I'm just that's how I'm saying. <laughs> like I said, there was a launch, a DLC launch trailer available for it. If you follow on our social media channels, you can see the link to this story and those details, as well as see that video in its entirety. Always, it's always interesting when developers, you know, support the game's post content. I I can't speak to where this is a good value or not. It seems like a lot of money, but also seems like it's you do get a fair amount of content depending on how long that DLC lasts. I mean, I paid for the, <laughs> you know, the Yuffie DLC for FF7 
and it might have got me three extra hours for 20 bucks. Now, granted, that was a pretty high, uh, high quality DLC, nonetheless, was pretty expensive if you go on, <laughs> you know, how many hours of gameplay I got out of it. Uh, the Fantasy Star Online 2 New Genesis Sandstorm Requiem update is uh, coming soon. It was shown off in the latest live stream. Um, here are the details on it. It will add things like the Rintim area, Chapter 2 of the story, new characters, new enemies, and new skills. Um, you can get a peek at all that in that live stream. If you will follow our social channels again, you can get the link to that live stream. It was about an hour and a half, so um, a lot of information was covered uh, doing that. Um, what went over on that live stream was what uh, players can expect in November of this year, but also detailed things coming in the winter update, which will come next year. Um, some new skills. Uh, were included. Bouncers will now get the Blade Arts Parry. Bravers will get Brave Spirit. Fighters, Forcers, all kinds of new spirit, uh, <laughs> new skills out there as part of this new update coming next month. If you are a PlayStation Now subscriber and looking for a new game to play, you can uh, you will get it in November. That is Final Fantasy IX. Will make its appearance on the uh, platform, I guess is the right word for it. Um, it's, it's available right now. So if you are really hankering for a game, you can check it out right now. There are some other games on there like uh, Celeste and Mafia as well. But yeah, that was, that was the one that <laughs> would be more up our alley in the JRPG world. This is an interesting article, and I don't know what to make of it just yet. It's kind of the beginnings of things. I will read it, and then we'll see what you think about this or what I might dive into. It. Sega has announced it is entering a strategic partnership with Microsoft that will use the Microsoft Azure cloud platform in developing large-scale next-gen super games. Furthermore, Microsoft will also provide next-gen development solutions for Sega games. This partnership was revealed at a press conference on the official Sega, Sega corporate website. In it, Sega notes that accessing high-quality entertainment has become easier as 5G and cloud services have become more widespread. Sega defines its super games as revolutionary titles for the next generation that will take advantage of these new technological developments. Notice the language there. And the thing that pops off in my head is obviously 5G, which is more for cell phones and mobile games. <sighs> so, I, And of course, we know that's a part of it. Let's hope it's not the focus of it. Specifically, it said titles would focus on aspects such as community, IP utilization, internet connectivity, and global scope. In order to develop these titles, Sega is enlisting the help of Microsoft's Azure Cloud platform. Microsoft will provide the network infrastructure and technology to support Sega's global titles and online services. Sega President and Chief Operating Officer Yuko Tsujino hopes to develop more entertaining games by combining Sega's development experience and Microsoft's technical ex expertise. So, I mean, sounds like a good thing. Uh, what back could come of it? These is not the first time these two companies have worked out, as we, as I've said many times, um, and before mentioned, the Fancy Star Online 2 and New Genesis. In North America, you get to play it on a Microsoft platform or your or PC obviously is not available on Switch or PlayStation. So obviously you have what they've done before. You could say that would lead towards other things. Remember now Sega, <laughs> the parent company of Atlas. Atlas has been trying to get into PC gaming. They have been doing so a little bit here and there. The obvious next step for Atlas would be something like Persona 5 Royal making its way to PC. No announcements on that quite yet. This sounds like something more in the future lines of development, though. 
is this going, you know, do I feel like this is like, we're only going to see Sega and Atlas games on Microsoft or PC? Of course not. That would be ridiculous. However, one can certainly see where, you know, the next, maybe Persona 6, comes out for everything, right? Um, we already see Shin Megami Tensei 5 is just on the Switch. So it's not like it's the only thing that's going one way or the other. I I want to hear a lot more about what they're planning. Hopefully, like I said, it's not just for mobile games, although that does seem to be the obvious application for it. Maybe it leads to bigger and better things down the road. And I'm not one of these people that says, I got a PlayStation, so I should get to enjoy Persona games. You know, everybody should be able to. Now, obviously, if it's Sony making a game, it should probably be just on Sony. However, we've seen Horizon Zero Dawn and God of War make their way to PC eventually. So I think we're getting close to a point where maybe Nintendo is going to be one of the last people that has a specific first-party stuff that stays on their platform only. We'll have to wait and see, but it's an interesting, interesting times we're coming up on, and we'll see how that leads to the future. Uh, speaking of Atlas, we've been talking a little bit about their 25th anniversary celebrations coming up. Uh, the official launch date for the store is about two weeks away, so on November 17th, the Atlas 25th Anniversary Persona store will open. It'll feature unannounced collector's products, and they will share further details as we get a little bit closer to that. Um, also included, in addition to Persona stuff, will be uh, popular merchandise or popular Atlas series, such as not only Persona, but Catherine and Shimigami Tensei as well. The store will add new collections every few weeks uh, and there you go that's gonna be going on for a while so i think that's just kind of the first shoe to drop um what is that what is the actual website um i guess just google you know um atlas shop i don't know i don't i see shop atlas but i don't see um I don't know. Maybe it's not quite live yet. I'm trying to look for a link as we're as we're going on here, and it's it's not showing me. So yeah, just keep tuned as uh, as I see who and what gets announced. I will pass that along to you. But that's all I got for for right now. But yeah, certainly exciting as we get close to it. I'm of course looking forward to some sort of big announcement. I mean, merchandise is cool. I'm probably not going to get much, if anything. What is a part of this 25th anniversary? Are we going to get the reveal for Persona 6? Are we going to get a remake of one of the older titles? Is the maybe that's where the announcement for P5 Royal coming to PC gets gets tossed in there? We'll wait and see. But as soon as I hear something, I will pass it on to you guys. Got a few more stories to pass along to you guys before I give my Tales of Arise final thoughts. Um if you recall a few months, a little while ago, the Masterline series statues for Nier Automata, there's a new one coming from Prime One Studios for Final Fantasy VI. Long-time listeners of the podcast know that game has a special place in my heart, as I hope it does in yours. They're developing a new statue based off kind of the logo in front of the game with Terra on top of the suit of Magitek armor. Guys, if you're watching the video version of this podcast, you're seeing the video that went along with it. It is incredible. It is an absolutely shut up and take my money moment. However, <laughs> no matter how incredible something is, you can't... Um, Put your family in the poorhouse for a action figure. Well, this is well, this is a statue. This is certainly not an action figure. You don't. You put this up behind lock and key and glass and 
put it in a museum because uh, I mentioned Masterline and Near Automata for a reason. This version does not have a release date or price yet, but we know how much those other ones cost. This is on a similar scale. Those things were almost $3,000. Is this going to be that much? I, I can't say for certain, but I'm not getting my hopes up that this is going to be something that I could ever afford to own, no matter how incredible it is. And it is incredible. Not only do you get Terra and the Magitek armor on top of uh, a platform with some steampunk, looks like some Narsh uh, stuff going on in the background, Along for the ride, on top of the Magitek, is our faithful Moogle Mog. So, as if it wasn't awesome enough already, you get a little Moogle action on top of it, as well as a one-sixth scale, which I don't know what that means, because these are models. It's not like we, you know... If you say a, a person's action figure is one-sixth scale, well, I can figure out how big that is, because if they're six feet tall... <laughs> They're going to be one-sixth of that. I don't know how big these things are supposed to be, um, but it does look uh, pretty amazing. It is, like I said, no release date and no price for it yet. It is the old adage of, if you have to ask how much something costs, you can't afford it. <laughs> um, but I want it, and... Might have to sell the car in order to get it. I'm sure the wife would just be thrilled to hear uh, craziness like that. Uh, coming up in just a week is Shimigami Tensei Five, the long-awaited Switch title. Um, there is a review that I shared for it from our friends over at Soconia, um, and they give it a glowing review. They did make a bold statement, though, and I do have a bit of a I don't think so moment with it um they say despite the megami tetsei series being over 30 years old its spinoff has gathered the most attention worldwide persona outshines the series that spawned it but they say this could be about to change persona 3 made the subseries popular and they this writer suspects smt5 could be an installment that does the same for the main branch it's simultaneously challenging cohesive, intimidating, stunning, and welcoming. That's a bold claim, my friend. Um, I think this game is going to do quite well. It is limited to the Switch audience. So, there you go. I mean, I, I feel like it's going to do quite well, but if you're talking Persona levels of popularity, I don't think that's accurate. And I mean, it could be that a way had to be proven to be uh, seen, but Persona is awful popular and has a widespread popularity. Um, so I would, I would say it's probably not going to be the way it is. But hey, they like the game. I think you guys are going to like it too, and it'll be out in just about a week or so. Uh, a game that was supposed to be out today. Uh, but I did check on the iOS store, and it's actually saying tomorrow is when it's going to be ready to roll out. And that is Tales of Luminaria, the newest mobile entry in the series. So yeah, you'll want to check on your on your store. Maybe it's different on Android. I don't know. But it got pushed back at least a, at least a day. There was a good interview with the uh, developers of the game saying that the project was uh, in development for um, for over two years course one of those was a COVID year year and a half so that obviously pushed things uh back quite a bit they say they were able to handle that pretty smoothly with the transition but uh, it was a good article i'm still looking forward to checking it out i thought i was going to check it out today and give you guys some quick feedback but yeah looks like it's going to be tomorrow and before that actually um happens Remember, this game is a simultaneous worldwide release. There, of course, can be some uh, some problems that uh, arise <laughs> during that process. So, I'll give you a brief moment to say goodbye if you don't want to hear my Tales of Arise thoughts. 
but I feel like the game has been out for a while. If you wanted to have it beaten by now, surely you're not as slow as a player as I am because I think I'm up there at world record status. I just don't have a lot of time to play. Went on vacation for a week, blah, 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 blah. When I first got it, you guys heard my thoughts. I was definitely a little down on the game. I I do believe we set ourselves up with very high expectations. Very, very high. And I don't think that those were able to be met. Um, From what I have seen since its release, the opinion of the game has been overwhelmingly positive. Um, I think just for myself personally, as a longtime Tales player, I didn't get that true Tales experience that I was looking for. However, it's a fantastic game. <laughs> it is a marvel to look at. It does things so smoothly, so much chaos going on at certain times. Um, the characters, they are very much take, it take you a while to really get into about halfway through the game. They reach a point of familiarity with each other and they let their guards down and just start being people, which if you are into the story, you kind of understand why that they're like that. But the second half of the game is so much better than the first half because the characters start to act like Tails characters, if that makes kind of sense. Um, they're funny. Like, there's always been that humor element to the games, and that you don't get that for a while. That finally starts to come out towards the later half. Um, I really, really enjoyed my playtime of the game, and I have no problem saying it's a solid 9 out of 10. It's easily JRPG of the year. It easily deserves every bit of praise that it receives, but it's not my favorite Tales game. I will really have to search my feelings as to how that would rank out, but I don't think it's top three. It may not even be top five, just from an experience standpoint. From a technological standpoint, it's number one with a bullet, and it's not even close. But it's okay to acknowledge a, the greatness of something without necessarily being a fan of or in love with it. Um, if, if, if this was a dating uh, scenario, I'd be, I'd really, really like the person, but I don't love them. You know, it's okay to date for a while and see if those developments, you know, feelings develop a little bit, but certainly not ready to, uh, propose (laughs) to make an analogy along those lines, you know, let's say, you know, in the sports world, if, you know, back when the Patriots were winning all the time, when Tom Brady was up there, they were the best. They won all the time. Most people didn't like them, but you could still acknowledge that they were a great, you know, franchise. You go back to the great franchises of others in sports. You can acknowledge how great something is without being a fan of it. See, Now, I definitely liked it. I would recommend it to absolutely everybody. There was just a few little things that took me out of it. Um, I did enjoy playing as Renwell. So that was one of the saving graces for me. And that's kind of when my opinion started to change. Was thankfully, and I don't know too many games that you're stuck into playing a certain character or not. But I was able to find somebody that fit more my play style. I wish there was more characters. I feel like six, while it was easier to tell the story in that aspect, I think I wanted a couple more characters. So you've got maybe six being too few. <laughs> you've got uh, Luminaria with 21. That's way too many, right? I always feel like eight to 10 is a good sweet spot, especially for Tales games. Even if you don't use a bunch of them. Like once I got my main party, I did not use... Um, Dolamine or um, Law, like I I used them in their boost attacks and they were they were handy. But I got my main four and I kind of stuck with them. They they served me quite well. The 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 game goes places that I didn't think it was going to go. It tackles some pretty heavy stuff. It's very it's a more mature story 
than maybe some of the other ones have tried to do, although Berseria was crazy mature, obviously, as well. But, yeah, I I feel like I'm I'm in the minority, and that's okay. But if you've not played it yet, like I said, it's JRPG of the Year, and it's not even close, probably. I, don't, I can't imagine anything would be would be up to that mark. I enjoyed it. There's still a lot to do. Like I rolled credits on it, but there's still quite a bit that I can go back and do. Um, that's kind of nice. Uh, there was some post um, post game content that you, that you can go back and do, which is new. I love that idea, of course. But I'm open to what you guys think about it. If you were completely in love with it and find no problems with it, that's great. If you didn't like it, that's good as well. I'd love to hear your opinions. You can leave those comments on our YouTube page on the video versions of this podcast or, uh, you know, on the links that I share on social media. Let me know. I'd love to hear your guys' opinion on the games and if if you found some faults with it, what those were, or if it was the best game of all time. I'd love to hear that opinion as well. So we said it was going to be short, and yeah, not too bad. We got 36 minutes or so. Hey, can't argue with that. So, this is going to be signing off. We'll be back next week. Let's go ahead and, and look at the uh, the calendar. Obviously, we've got Thanksgiving coming up uh, here in the U.S. That falls on a Thursday. So, I'll probably record on Wednesday that week. Just guesstimating. Um, I would think. Here's what happens if you guys are unfamiliar. On, we have the holiday on Thursday. Friday is a shopping day, basically, and recovery from eating all day on Thursday. Uh, businesses are usually those type of businesses that would bring news out for JRPGs, right? Obviously, all the retail stuff is open, but things kind of shut down for that four day holiday weekend. So I will record on Wednesday, and then maybe the next week might be some extra stuff thrown in there. But yeah, just kind of looking ahead, it's hard to believe we're already getting close to that holiday season and. Uh, memories of great Christmases past, maybe as a kid, and opening up that, ah, we're talking about Final Fantasy three, that Christmas morning, opening that new game and reading over the book, and all those good things that uh, nostalgia brings to us. So that's going to do it for episode 190. My name is James Fisher. Thank you so much for listening. We'll be back next week. But until then, get back out there and level up. <laughs>